Yes, I'm obsessed with digestion. I am obsessed with the way the body breaks food down, pulls nutrients out of it, and giving it every possible opportunity to do so. And there are a few habits that I've taken over the last 14 years and incorporated after reading one book, one book that completely changed every way, the way that I set up a plate anywhere. And it's almost to the point where I don't even think about it anymore. I know it's been a long time and it wasn't just a habit that I broke right away. I, it wasn't even set out to do that. It all started with going gluten free. That's not what this video is about. It's about digestion. So please stay with me. Another evergreen video coming at you. And this is one of those ones that I'm hoping that you keep and watch because it's very important that this didn't just start 14 years ago. It just laid the foundation that led to where I am at today when it comes to just being obsessed with the way the body approaches food and the way I eat. And it, it's kind of, it can be out there, but I'm going to show you that it's not. Maybe. So I'm going to break out my, my, my big giant habit here and ask you to hit that like button and subscribe today if you haven't. And I appreciate it, of course. But protein first, fats second, carbs third. In that order, in this hole, for 14 years. It's been, it's been a ride in a way that I, when I was reading this book, I'm not going to say what it is. You can comment and I might tell you. Oh, I'm not going to push the book. It's not what I'm here for. That's not what I'm here for. But setting that plate up with in eating protein first, eating fat second, and eating carbs for what I do for the day, functional carb eating, timely carb eating. If I'm not doing anything for that day, like I'm doing sitting right here, the carbs are pulled back to the point where there's more protein, more fat, less carbohydrates. And if there are carbs, there are certain ones. And I'll leave the list at the end in a video for you to watch or read. The point here is that I got so focused on digestion that I, I that back then I set out to eliminate gluten from my diet. I wanted to go gluten free and it wasn't something that I really was. I was like, okay, well, this is not going to, I'm going to see how this works. Took a week, super hard, right? I will never forget like, where I was shopping, where I was at, where I was like going that I'm like, it's hard to, you know, didn't pick up any bread, no, no rice, no, no pasta, no nothing. I mean, nothing just basically started shopping. It wasn't keto but it was more focused on meat and vegetables solely, right? But vegetable is like broccoli, um, spinach, cooked, all of this is cooked, a uh, cauliflower, asparagus, get where I'm going, arugula. So I really did, I did that for the longest, for 97 days. I had it written, I still have it written down. It went on for 97 days where I set out for a week. It worked so well that I was eating, and I, you know, I was eating two pounds of meat per day, which was right around 170, 180 grams of protein, and about, I would say, a, a, a very generous amount of fat because most of the protein I was eating was beef, chicken, but lean chicken and lean, lean turkey every now and then during that time, and a, a lot of fish, a lot of salmon. But majority of my vegetables, and then it was, you know, the fat was butter. I, 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 I was never eating butter, but I included butter. I was including um, certain cheeses, but it was basically meat and vegetables for 97 days. And I would eat my protein first, about, and then my fats were normally or normally combined with the, with the protein. In that case, you know, I would add some fats to the vegetables, but I would eat my vegetables after. I wouldn't eat them all with it. I would eat about 15 minutes or so within that time frame of sitting down. And it became a timing thing. And I got used to that. I got used to that. It was easy to, it was all, all that food is portable, right? 
So it became this thing where I was going to do it for 30 days and then it turned into 60 days and then it turned into night. And, you know, I remember back then it felt so long that it was went on so long. I'm like, wow, I'm, this is fantastic. Lost a great deal amount of weight, increased energy, bloating went away, no more gas, everything. Just, I'm not going to say it was perfect, but it was to the point where, I mean, I, there was cravings that sat in, meaning like cravings for carbohydrates, sugar, sugar cravings, but I substitute some of those with other things. But my point is, is I stayed on it. And that, that, that entire scenario changed the way that I looked at digestion forever. Till now, even moving forward. On how intermittent fasting or timely eating became that habit for me. In a, 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 a habit where I, I wasn't overeating, I was getting adequate amounts of protein, and I made sure that I was eating, you know, and I didn't have to think about it after quite a, but after that 90 days plus, I wasn't even thinking about it. It just became part. Now, at the end of that 97 days, yes, I started to include carbohydrates, clean ones back in, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes some fruit, berries mostly, blueberries, strawberries, um, some pineapple every now and then, um, a watermelon. I, I, like I said, I have the list at the end. I'm going over all this because it changed the way that my digestive, my digestion works and it changed the way that I not only coach but break down meal plans and help individuals with that is getting your body to burn through protein or digest protein first. Think about it, Your, our body needs protein for so many functions in our body. It, the immune system can take up a lot. As you age can take, as you age into your 30s, 40s, it's even more because we're constantly fighting against not only age, but muscle loss, right? We're, and, and it's, you know, that, that protein level should go up. And I noticed back then, and how my, not just my energy levels were different, were great. My libido was completely off the charts, which was fantastic. At a time when I felt like where I thought should be declining. And it was to the point where thinking like that, eating carbs, eating the, pro, I'm sorry, the protein first, letting your body break it down. And then, then there was the, the timely eating where I wasn't eating. I started not eating breakfast then. I started skipping my breakfast meal back then and noticed that I was burning through a lot more fat over time, of course, and noticed that, that my digestion, I had no more bloating problems. I had no more gas problems, meaning, you know, not that I was a gassy person, but it was just an incredible thing to see. And when I ate in that order and how efficient digestion became, you know, I'm not going to get gross on you, but the bowel movements were on point to the point where I was like, wow, this is incredible. It was hard to deviate and go back from that because I remember eating that first slice of cake at someone's birthday party and it was, came with a piece of pizza and how horrible I felt for eh, about 12 hours or so. I remember that time, and then I was like, wow, I'm not going to do that again. Um, it just spiked everything, right? I'm not going to get into all these cliches about how certain diets, but I made that become part of my nutrition and on how eating you know, the protein first, the fat second, the carbohydrates got me so honed in on digestion to the point where it became that obsession where I'm like, wow, I want my body to become, I loved how efficient that it became at absorbing everything and how coffee just affected me different back then i was drinking six seven cups of coffee a day it's a lot of caffeine right and i'm not talking eight ounce cups cups of coffee i'm talking 12 16 ounces which is a lot i couldn't do that anymore my body was absorbing I, I, it was one to two cups at most and i was that it felt like i, I was flying because i'm like okay i gotta i had to back that off because I had so much energy over time that I was started I was only drinking a cup a day, a cup and a half a day. 
that's all I could, that's all my body was willing to metabolize. How about that? And that just lets me know on how efficient our body can become at digesting and how important it is for that digestive system to work to not only just get rid of and keep visceral fat at bay around your organs, but keep the overall body composition of fat down by just, because there was long periods of time where I didn't lift any weights and I didn't lift any, and I, and I, did, I did a lot of walking, of course. That was a big part of what I was doing. I was walking after meals. Again, that, that spiked for me digestion. And I seen it. I not only seen it, but felt it. It's one thing watching videos like this and people talking about it. It's about doing it and seeing what it looks like for 30 days, 90 days, a year. You know, some of these studies go on for years. Taking a study on myself and it was, was the ideal scenario that not only would I've always learned being a nutrition coach, being a personal trainer, and breaking meal plans down completely changed the way that I look and see when other people are doing the exact same thing, sort of, built around them. It's just, wow, how efficient our body becomes when we take bad, some bad habits out and incorporate some those healthy habits by just eating food in that order and eating carbs for when you need them. For instance, and this is where I'll, where I'll stop mostly, is that at the end, at, at, on the days that I lift, that's when I consume the most of my carbs because I know those days are fairly intense. I'm walking a lot of steps. I'm burning through a lot of calories, so I have to up the calories and the easy way to do that is fill the gaps with carbohydrates. So that's like, to me, that's like eating carbs from what I'm performing for the day. If I'm not doing something on a Friday, those carbs get cut to a point where not non-existent, I still incorporate some of them in there, mostly fruits and vegetables. Okay, nothing, sometimes there'll be those snacks in there. But, just doing that j narrowed, you know, the digestive part down to where when I do eat grain carbs, like for instance, some oatmeal or some like Ezekiel bread, and I'm using, I'm plugging that because that was the bread that I came back to and I didn't feel any of the effects when I introduced that bread back and started eating, okay, sandwiches, you know, sandwiches that weren't just salads without bread, right? Um, but that, that one, that, that scenario in itself, plugging that into those days is ideal. So I did plug in some different car like grain carbohydrates, mostly oatmeal, because not only did I miss it, but I missed overnight oats. I'm saying all of this because that is my journey with digestion. That's my obsession to the point as I'm coaching I not only have been down those roads over the last 14 years plus, I'm just using these moments that not only light bulbs go on, but real life scenarios that are outlasting what I ever thought would be possible. And there are diets out there that you just use as tools. There are, but at the, at the end of the day, a diet should turn in to the focus of nutrition. Get rid of the diet. Plug the diet in to nutrition. Plug another diet into nutrition. They're temporary fixes. Nutrition is for life. Diets are something we're say we're gonna, oh, I'm gonna go on a diet January 1st. January 17th, it's over, right? That's the New Year's resolution syndrome that I say that. I mean, I work in a gym, and I'll leave you with this last thing, is I work at a gym throughout the beginning of the year, throughout the course of the year, it's amazing to see those gym memberships go through the roof. Everybody's got these high intentions. Everything's there. And then by the time February, mid-February, it is a ghost town in some areas. It, it, it just, it's, it's one of those things. And that's, that, that's just it. We got to take nutrition and make it more than just a diet. We got to take this here 
to a point where these are our main focuses and functional, you know, not functional eating, but eating for eating carbs in a timely manner for what we do, not taking them out of our lives. It could be temporary if you're going to do a keto diet or an Atkins diet or a diet that's a tool for that temporary moment. You know, I, I, I sprint once a week, but that's playing basketball, right? It's not something I'm doing every day. It's just part of my routine of fitness. It's something that I love to do, incorporate it. That's how nutrition should be. Nutrition should be plugging all of these in on a consistent basis that you can stay with, not just stay with, but become part of what true digestion should be. And that should be that foundation of nutrition, not just the diet, but eliminating some things out of your diet initially for, ex for extended periods of time can be key for digestion, for your body to absorb nutrients in a way that you never thought was possible. That's it. Please comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I'm sorry this was so long, but watch it again. <laughs> Take some notes. Seriously. Later, guys.